All right, so it is Endometriosis Awareness Month, and we're highlighting the chronic condition that affects women during their reproductive years and unfortunately can lead to a host of things, including impaired fertility. We're talking signs, symptoms, and the precautions that we can take for early treatment with the director and co-founder of the BASE Foundation, Shona Fuller-Clark, and cons consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at the Hugh Winter Fertility Unit, Dr. Sharifa Frederick. Ladies, good morning to you. Thank morning. you for being here this morning. morning. I'm going to start with you, um, Shona, because you, you, you're the co-founder of, well, you're a founder of BASE. Yes, yes. Um, which you founded through your own, or as a result of your own My experience. My own experience. You, you suffer from, I suffer do. with, is that the right, is that the right verb? Suffer with? Suffer from. Live suffer with? From. Mm -hmm. I live with it <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and you say your case is chronic. Yes. What, what is it, really? Well, I have stage four endometriosis, and it's where, you know, tissue similar to what's found in the lining of the womb is found outside of the womb. Most cases, that tissue is in the pelvic area, but I'm so special, it went to my lung. So I've had endometriosis in my lung, suffered from a lung collapse. Endometriosis in your lung? Yes. Is that thing, Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. Yes. No way. Yeah. So you, you, you had a lung collapse, So I, I had a lung collapse, and at that point, they didn't realize that it was endometriosis. So I went through a period of uncertainty. It was quite traumatizing for myself and my family. And it, was, it took over a year to realize that it was endometriosis. So how do you treat now? How do you manage? We, I manage because there's no known cure. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of getting medical treatment um, being on hormones, having um, pain medications. But I try to have a holistic approach. So changing the diet, exercising more. I have a partnership with my doctor mm -hmm. because it's very important to speak about your objectives. You know, if it's pain management, if you want to get pregnant, for whatever reason, it's important to have a good relationship with your doctor. Yeah, endometriosis, doc, is not something... I think that we started talking about until maybe in the last five years, I've heard a lot of people talking about endometriosis. I don't know if it's like postpartum or any other, you know, um, situation that women go through and they don't want to talk about it because there's shame involved yeah. or you think you're the only one or, but when I think of endometriosis, I don't think of lungs collapsing. I think of bad period pains. I think of cramps. I think of, um, you know, infertility, because these are the things we hear about, but apparently it, it it can be much more than that, much more involved. Yes, it can. It's a very, it's a chronic disease, just like hypertension and diabetes. It's a chronic disease, and that's how we need to think of endometriosis. Um, so it's a disease where you know you have, well, as Shauna said, it's the lining of the wound has now migrated to the outside of the pelvis, and it can migrate to distant organs. It can migrate to your lungs, your nose, distant organs. Yes, so. It needs to be managed as such. So, so when it migrates to the lungs, what happens? It impacts, how does it, is it pressure that's brought on the lungs? Well, it it's actually to the nose, endometriotic it tissue that gets deposited oh. in the lungs and it behaves the same way as it does in the pelvis. So every time you have a period, it will bleed as well. I cannot Set up an bleed. inflammation. Wow. Yes. And who is predisposed? Is anybody predisposed? How do you... Well, women in the reproductive age group, mm -hmm. so from age 15 to 45, you're at risk of having endometriosis. So anybody can have endometriosis. About 20% of people actually have no symptoms at all. Wow. So you could be walking around with endometriosis and you don't even know it. Are you genetically predisposed? It, there's some immunological um, predisposition. There's genetic. Nobody really knows, you know, why somebody, why Shauna will get it and mm -hmm. somebody else won't, you know. And what are some of the manifestations? You say it's asymptomatic a lot right. of the Right. So commonly it presents as a young woman who, when she starts having her period and she starts having pain with the period. Sometimes the pain starts long before the period starts. So that's one mm -hmm. of the, the, yeah, the mm -hmm. symptoms mm -hmm. of it. Um, and then you may have a lot of bloating associated mm -hmm. with the period. So you may have peri um, pain starting before the period starts, and when the period actually starts, it actually gets worse. You have pain passing urine, pain passing stool, pain during intercourse. Mm -hmm. And after a while, because the disease becomes so florid, you now have pain without even having your periods. You just have chronic, constant pain 
and it can be debilitating as well. I know there are women watching. We talked about this a couple of months ago and somebody literally stopped me on the street and started crying because she said she had been going through this for so long and she had no idea what it was until she watched the interview and she, she saw and she identified with some of the symptoms. Um, there are women who are made to feel, and oftentimes we perpetrate it, that pain as a woman is something that women go through. Yes. So you have a period of pain, whether you're on the ground, ball up, cripple up, this is just what women go through. It's not normal, though. So commonly you have young women and their grandmother would say, oh, it's just your period, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. a normal thing, get over it. You know, no. If you have severe pain, that's making you fall on the ground, it's something to be checked out. Mm -hmm. or, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. Or if you, as a young teenager, you find yourself in a nurse's office every month, mm -hmm. that is not normal. If you find that you can't participate in your PE classes, that's not normal. Um, one of the things, you know, it's interesting that you said someone was crying. One of the things we don't speak about is the depression that comes along with endometriosis. It's much more than the symptoms because these women, you know, they're not able to be productive at work. They don't feel that they're able to speak about it because we don't speak about women's issues. We don't speak about fertility issues. It has affected so many relationships, mm -hmm. mash up plenty mm -hmm. marriages. And in a culture where every Jamaican finds it necessary to ask you, so you haven't, you're not on a picnic yet? Or mm -hmm. you only have one? What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Right. Well, I have endometriosis. So, I mean, you know, we're not sensitive in no that words. way. So that's one of the reasons why you founded BASE. Yes, I'm happy that you said in the last five years, you've been hearing a lot. We've been trying to work a lot with people, with doctors, with the public, you know, providing information. For, we've educated over 3,000 teenagers. And BASE means? Better awareness and support for, for endometriosis. Mm -hmm. So we've been going into the schools. We went into a few, um, like Denham Town, Tivoli, Penwood. We've gone mm -hmm. to schools in Montego Bay. So over 3,000 teenagers. Because if they can start asking those questions at that and age. And identifying early if they feel something in their bodies that don't feel right. That is pretty key in terms of getting to the doctor, getting an early diagnosis so you can get earlier treatment. You know, I find it so interesting, Shauna, and so... Um, you know, it's amazing how everything is linked, eh? So your physical health, you speak about mental health. Nobody's thinking about mental health ties to endometriosis, but no. there are those repercussions. Right. If your body's not functioning well, you can't. You want to have kids. If that's your greatest desire, you can't do that. Then you have to learn also how to cope mm -hmm. with what comes with not being able exactly. um, to, to have that child. Doc, in terms of um, diagnosing and treatment, um, Shonda said she has stage four. Mm -hmm. There are different stages, obviously. How does treatment work when you diagnose? Okay, so the gold standard of diagnosis is actually doing laparoscopy. Okay. <clears throat> That's where we can actually see the nodules. and so we can insert actually, a cam yeah, so small you insert camera. Yes, a camera, mm -hmm. keyhole surgery mm -hmm. into the navel, and you have other ports where you can actually use them to treat. So you basically, the principles of management includes um, getting rid of the nodules, getting mm -hmm. rid of all of the endometriotic nodules there. Um, medical support is also important because what you want to do now is suppress the disease and prevent recurrence of new nodules. So that's the essence of treatment. Yeah, so and we can do that all here. Yes, definitely. Okay. So Just we do that. At you the know, some people think you have to fly out to get. Oh good no, 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 right, no, right. No. Okay. <laughs> and that's whether you're at stage one or what's it? What's it? What's the highest stage? Four. Four. So stage four okay. is the highest stage. Okay. Yes. All yes. right. So, Shauna, for the ladies who are watching this morning and had an aha moment. Where do we get through to base? You can email us <coughs> at hello at basejamaica.com. Um, we're also on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We actually have an IG live series every week on a Thursday, 1230, where we invite doctors, people who deal with holistic treatment options, so you can hear what's going on about the treatment options. Our telephone number is 810-2273. Okay, easy to remember. Dr. Frederick, who are the young ladies or older ladies watching now who ought to make an appointment to come see you or any other um, OBGYN? Right, so we, they can contact us at the Hugh Winter Fertility mm -hmm. Management Unit. Mm -hmm. There's a team of doctors there. We specialize in the treatment of endometriosis. And that's if you're what, symptomatically, if you're? Well, if you're having very, very painful periods, a lot of bloating, <laughs> if you're having painful intercourse, if you're having in a, um, difficulty, um, having a baby, mm -hmm. you can contact us mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. There are so many women who are going through this now and did not know. One thing I'd like to ask Very quickly, or we add to is that we are self-funded, so any help, support in spreading the word, we would appreciate it. Yeah.
Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank Thanks. you, Shona, for sharing. Thanks. Appreciate it, director and co-founder of the Bayes Foundation, Shona Fuller-Clark, and consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at the Q Winter Fertility Unit, Dr. Sharifa Frederick. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get a little music, and later we get the budget breakdown. We'll be right back. <laughs>